tell me your name and how old you are. Irene Duran, and I'm, I'm 88 years old. And where did you grow up? In Guadalupe. What's your best memory from when you were a little girl? Riding bikes and climbing trees. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call me La Cabra because I used to climb trees. Cuando era joven, cuando era chiquita, ¿qué recuerda de su niñez? De su, de su papá, de su mamá. Mi, mi mamá era muy, un, muy buena cocinera y, y la respetábamos mucho. Y mi papá era muy estricto. Él no nos dejaba hacer nada porque era muy estricto. Y, ¿Y cuál era el plato favorito este de su mamá? ¿Cuál a, era la comida que más le gustaba? A, a mí. De su mamá. El chile verde y las tortillas. ¿Y usted aprendió a hacer tortillas con su mamá y cocinar? I, sí, yo aprendí todo eso de ella. Yo hacía tortillas, hacía pan, hacía bizcochitos, hacía pa pasteles, de todo hacía, pero y ahora no puedo. This is my mom, and this is her brother, and this is my dad, and this is his sister. And how old is this photo? When was that photo taken? Oh, this photo was taken maybe 50 years ago, and maybe even more, because they were still young. My mom never worked. She was just a housewife. And my dad, my dad was a sheep herder. ¿Y qué hacía en el rancho con su papá? Uh, él sembraba coliflor y sembraba coles. Y teníamos que ir a las 5 de la mañana a amarrar la coliflor antes de que saliera el sol. Y luego lo, uh, la echábamos, cuando íbamos a cortarlos, y tenía coles, cuando íbamos a cortar los coles, tenía un, un uh, era como un bogue, y, y la jalaban con caballo, y llenábamos la carreta y la llevábamos para donde era un shed, y ahí cortábamos, uh, sorteábamos la coliflor, y la que estaba buena la, la empacábamos y la que no la tirábamos. Y yo trimeaba los cajones de coliflor. When you were growing up, your dad would go out and he would work and tend to the sheep with your brothers? No. He was just that, he used to work in Wyoming by himself. He was a sheep herder there. And then when he came back, he used to be, he used to work on the farm with some other people. My dad used to have a, a, a work with somebody else, but uh, he used to live in the farm, but it wasn't his. But we also worked there too with him. ¿Y cuántos años trabajaba en eso con su papá? Uh, trabajé desde que tenía 16 años hasta que me casé. ¿Y cómo conoció a su esposo? No lo conocía. Él es, estaba en el servicio y él vivía en Alamosa. ¿Y qué hacían ustedes? ¿En qué trabajaban? Ya de casados. Oh, pues yo no comencé a trabajar hasta que él nos lo operaron del espinazo. Él trabajaba en los ranchos. Y bueno, él agarraba pensión del gobierno. Y comencé a trabajar yo para pagar los lonches de, los, de mis hijos en la escuela. Y ahí seguí, seguí trabajando hasta que por, trabajé en la cocina de cocinera por, como por seis años. Y luego nos descargaron de la cocina y fui a trabajar con los muchitos de foster grandparent. Y ahí trabajé por seis años. Y en todo ese tiempo, en, en su experiencia viviendo aquí en el valle, ¿usted sentía que en algún momento los güeros trataban a los hispanos diferente? Ya. Yeah. Pues aquí era primero los indios. Este era un in, an Indian fort. This, ese era esta palacita. Por eso es que hay caminos por los dos lados. Porque, y luego se, se fueron los indios y vinieron los gabachos. Y luego se fueron los gabachos. Y ahora están los, uh, los uh, Amishes. Y los gabachos de trato, o sea, el trato de los gabachos, así los hispanos, ¿cómo era cuando usted era niña? Cuando era joven. ¿Se llevaban bien con los gabachos o había conflicto? Había... Yeah. Oh, sí. Yo no, yo nunca tuve broma con ni uno de ellos y, y tuve maestros gabachos, pero a mí me trataban muy bien. 
pero yo no era mal criado. What language did you grow up speaking at home? Spanish. Now? Mm -hmm. English and Spanish both. Did you teach your kids to speak Spanish? Yes. And do they all still speak Spanish? Yes. And what does the Spanish language mean to you? Well, to me, I like Spanish because that's the only language I really know. I, I can speak English, but not like Spanish. And in school, uh, we, did, we were not allowed to speak Spanish, but all of us did. All the kids that were in, going in my grade, we all spoke Spanish. Spanish. Where did you go to school? In Conejos. Did, you, did the nuns teach you at school? One year. The rest were teachers, ladies. I had three ladies and one man. And so through your whole school year, they didn't let you speak Spanish or just when you got older? Just when I got older. Did they tell you why? Because they, they told us that, uh, uh, that we were not allowed to speak Spanish. We were, had to speak English. Did you ever get in trouble at school for talking Spanish? Sometimes. <laughs> What did they do? They gave us rules to write. I might not speak Spanish again. Oh, and you had to write them on the chalkboard? De vivir acá, este, ¿cómo era su vida con los, los otros niños? ¿Hablaba en español? No más en español, hablábamos nunca, hablábamos eh, inglés. Pero es una de la edad mía, no sabemos cómo hablar en inglés. Hacemos la lucha, but nos entienden. ¿Y cuándo empezaron a hablar inglés? Cuando comencé la escuela, el número uno, porque yo no fui más que hasta el ocho, yo no agradé el doce. Comencé y lo cuité, porque tenía que ayudarle a mi papá en el rancho. Can you tell us about when you met your husband? How did you meet him? I met him when he came to visit his grandpa. His grandpa used to live across the, the road where that trail Mike lives. There's where his parents used to live. And there's where I met him. And when you met him, did you think this is who I'm going to marry? Well, uh, he treated me uh, good and I learned to love him. And he asked me to marry him. And... Uh, I said yes, and we loved. You got married on your own? I got married in Taos, New Mexico. In Taos. And we lived for, we were going to complete the 65 years in, in June, and he died in December. Never, we never got uh, separated at all. He never left us. Or, he was a good man, a good provider. And you had how many children? Four. Four. I had five, but my second child passed away. Did any of your children stay here? Do they still live here? Yeah, they all stayed here till they finished school and got married. They left. Well, they didn't leave. They lived here. All of them live here. What do they do now? Well, they're retired teachers. And my daughter's uh, retiring this year. My son works with his hands. He's, he never wanted to go to college. My, that's my baby. And how many grandchildren do you have? Grandchildren, I have seven. And great-grandchildren, I have 16. And one other way. And one great-great. But when you were growing up, were most people farmers and ranchers? Or? Yeah, that's all there was farmers and ranchers when I was growing up. Very few people had good jobs, you know, but all of them were ranchers and farmers. And that is that true today as well? Yeah. Uh, and they didn't get paid that much, but uh, the food wasn't that expensive. Do you remember, or what do you remember from the 150th celebration? Of La Virgen. Is that Remember when they celebrated the anniversary of the church and everybody did that? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were all dressed in uh, old people. 
and uh, we went on the parade all around on buggies and horse. And then they had dinner, then they had a dance. They built a, a platform in the middle of the, of the place here, and they had music and danced. Yeah. Can you tell us about the tradition that the people in this community have with the statue when they give that to a different family every year? Yeah, we, we still have it. It's a lady of Guadalupe, and we celebrate every 6th of October. We have a mass, we have a rosary, and then we have a, a velorio, that you call them velorios, and we pray the rosary, we sing, and we have lunch. And that's every year at the 6th of October. And why do you do that? Because the people that lived here before, when they had that flood, they promised that if they would come back, they would do this to the blessed to Lady of Guadalupe. That's the way it started. It started when the old people lived here. And why do they transfer the statue from family to family? That's why it has to go like that. It has to go every six of October goes to one family, and then the next year to the next family around here. Have you ever had it? Yes. I even bought the one they have. I bought that one. Me and, uh, and the other lady, but she's already, she passed on. We bought the Lady of Guadalupe from people from Mexico. When you were younger, for example, was your father a penitente, or do you remember the penitentes? Los hermanos penitentes. Do you... My dad was not a penitente. Uh, they used to go out and... and uh, for uh, Lent, they used to have uh, uh, rosaries and they used to sing alabaos. But that's, they don't have that anymore. They, there's no more penitentes. So everything goes, you know? What do you remember about the, like during Semana Santa or Holy Week? Do you, do you, would you go to the Morada? Would, you, would your family go? Yeah, we used to go, and uh, they used to have the velorio on, on La, La Morada. And then they used to come to church and play the stations. And it was a very strict uh, Holy Week. And how, how important is, or what does, the, you know, what does Catholic, being Catholic, mean to you? Well, when I was growing up, the Catholic was, religion was very, very strict. We could not have, we could not go to communion unless we go to confession. We could not eat meat on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And uh, we used to spend the time in, in church. We didn't have cars. We used to walk to church twice a day, in the morning and in the afternoon. And conejos, and we couldn't go without a hat, and we couldn't wear pants. We had to wear a dress. The ladies. Over the years, did you participate in the church? Were you part of the church? Do I what? Did you participate in the church? Did you were you part of organizing and helping? Uh, yes, until I couldn't do it anymore. What would you do? Well, we used to uh, we used to have a, a well, you call the uh, sacred heart. We used to go and put up the altar, and uh, the next day we used to go and pray the rosary and have a mass, and we still do. And I used to go help do that, but I can't do it anymore. I was a vice president of the sacred heart. What are some of the other traditions that the women in the Sacred Heart help the church with? Do you help with funerals? Or? No, just when the member dies, we have to go to the funeral and pray the rosary and pray and have, go to the funeral and then go to the cemetery and, and well, they have something to say there. That's, that's the only thing we do for Sacred Heart. What was Antonito like when you were younger? 
How how was Antonito? Too? Oh, Antonito was beautiful. We had a Jesse Penny, we had a Daniels, we had Sergeants, and we had Caloves, and three restaurants. It was a nice place, and now there's nothing. What's different now? There's only one uh, one uh, re one uh, grocery store, one restaurant, two restaurants, and I don't know how many liquor stores. <laughs> one, no. No, there's one. And what do you think that, why do you think things have changed so much? Well, before people were so friendly and uh, all of a sudden, I don't know what happened that, you know, you hardly ever see people that I even know, knew before. It's not the same anymore. Uh, stuff that they took away from us, with Jesse Penny and all those. It's then it started changing. When did all that start going away? Ooh, about 20, 25 years ago. I was very young when it, when it stopped. And what did Guadalupe used to be like? Uh, Guadalupe used to be a beautiful place. Uh, there's the houses don't look like they used to do before. There was no no roofing like now. It was flat, and it was like dirt on top of the the roof, and the walls were plastered with uh, with uh, mud, not like it is now. And there was one, two, three, four forts that used to be here. The rest were. Houses like this, but they were different. And people, when they were putting plaster outside with mud, all the neighbors used to get together and help. They used to help. And then when they killed an animal, everybody took a piece of, of that meat. It was a good place here to live. Everybody was friendly. Everybody was willing to help. And when did that start changing? When people started leaving, uh, leaving from here, because my neighbors left, and they said these other neighbors left, and then the ones that had the fort, they passed on. Changes a lot.